Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerdlings of all ages, welcome to game number one of tonight's PUBG EU. I was going to say custom games there for a second. That's what I did most recently. It's the PUBG EU Pro Scrims, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jorasa, beautiful golden tint to the plane there as the light reflects off of it as we go flying over Miramar. Let's take a look at the plane path and then introduce some of the teams that are going to be fighting for you this evening. Right, plane path is going to be roughly 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock. A little bit of a southern skew, so some of the teams that would normally be choosing to land up north might struggle just a little bit or will be grabbing vehicles for sure. I don't anticipate we'll have too many uh, disagreements over drop spots. The teams do tell each other where their preferred drop spots are uh, before the start of the game as well. And also, which will be very interesting for some, we have the new FaZe Clan lineup as well. There you can see FaZe Diggory. Oh my god. Right next to Na'Vi as well. What a way to start your scrims, hey? Diggory, of course, formerly of Ents. Now very much a part of FaZe Clan. And FaZe and Na'Vi... Are, are we really seeing a hot drop? We're actually seeing a hot drop here. In game number... This is weird. I don't know what's going on here, but Na'Vi and FaZe are absolutely going at it here. In game number one, we're going to have to keep a lookout. Are they all four players? Yes, all four. So I think it was originally intended to be a 2-2 split. But because FaZe Clan are here now as well, it means that... Uh, oh, what a great initial shot there from Diggory. 64 damage. But now we push in. Alia spots and gets a bit of damage. But ultimately, the trade does come in. And that's two members of Na'Vi now down and out. What's Quizzy going to do? Do we have any sort of counter-aggression here? It doesn't look like it. Quizzy and Melman are stuck to the west of Gustav right now. And this is not good from a Na'Vi point of view. I don't know why they landed on top of each other. I'm fairly confident that in scrims, the teams notify each other of their intended drop spots beforehand. But I suspect Na'Vi and FaZe have the same priority as each other. So if they both want this spot, um, there's, no, there's no protection, as it were, because... They're both world-class teams. They're both the top tier of team. So maybe they did just want to fight for it. I don't know. I'll have to find out in between games and let you guys know what I find out. What I do know, though, is for now, FaZe Clan have all four left alive. Na'Vi have two left alive, and FaZe Clan can afford to take it easy. They know that Quizzy is in this... Uh, I like to call them the Walkers from Star Wars, because that's kind of what they remind me of here. But they know that Quizzy's in here. Or one member of Na'Vi's in here. And they can basically surround it and not let him out. Melman is in the warehouse behind. What has he got? He's got an SLR and a barrel. So he's pretty well kitted. The problem is they're two players against four. Uh, there's not too much else to say here. First circle. They are in the first circle as well. Which means this fight can drag on and on and on. So bear with me on that. We've got big boss life as well. Oh my. Gustav absolutely taking one to the dome there. Quizzy finding him with the winnie. They should know, of course, that it's not just a single member of FaZe Clan, so they're not going to be uh, rushing in or anything like that. Gustav should be able to get into a safe location for Fex to go in and save. We've also got Big Boss Life fighting here. And uh, yes, Dignitas is in this lobby as well. Uh, I'll give you guys a full list of the uh, teams in just a second. That's Team No Tag, so uh, Niku, unfortunately is out. O'Connell and Explicit still here. Oh, that's not good. Down to two that early, to be fair. Exactly the same fate here as Navi. Melman's actually managed to go a bit further north, by the way. So he's not that close to Quizzy anymore. In search of more loot. Gustav is back up. And FaZe Clan are effectively playing this 3v1. Quizzy now on the roof. If 8C spots him here, that'll be great. And from Navi's point of view... We want Quizzy to spot Aidsy so that he can radio his location to Melman. And Melman can win that 1v1. He can't win the 1v1 though if he's knocked himself. And suddenly Quizzy is the last member of Na'Vi left alive. The rest of FaZe Clan are now going to be thinking about moving in. Surely. Have they spotted he's on the roof yet? No. Fex is throwing uh, grenades inside that building. So they obviously still think he's... Um... Oh. Hang on. Just got a whiff of that. He's gone back inside. Grenade is good. 30 damage onto Quizzy. That should be enough for a push, I think. Navi struggling here. FaZe Clan thinking about it. They want to go in and finish this off. The good news is they have time. 
So there's no one in here. If we look from Quizzy's point of view. Oh, looking for the slimmest of angles onto Gustav. No tag eliminated now. Explicit and O'Connell go down to Big Boss Life and Virtus Pro, respectively. We might be watching Quizzy's last stand here. Or we could be watching one of the greatest 1v4s that could happen. Who knows? Any of these are possible. Quizzy venturing a bit further forward now. Here's Diggory on the stairs and knows that he can't actually afford. Just spend too much more time looking behind him. Will we take the aggressive approach and said we will. What does that mean? Diggory will have heard the change in footsteps and will know that he might have come out. He'll be looking to the right, but he's not at the right. He's actually prone in front. Oh, he sees him. Diggory down. But the trade comes out. Na'Vi eliminated and FaZe Clan will be able to wipe them out. Uh, separately, we've got Virtus Pro and Team Liquid. What? Oh my god, Clip out in the middle of nowhere. What is even going on here? They have properly got caught trying to go for the vehicle. That's not going to work at all. Batulins and Spyro combine to eliminate Clip. I don't think he's getting res there at all. Virtus Pro have an excellent bunch of angles there. Svetlana already down. Luz actually got an excellent point behind this rock. And where's the rest of Team Liquid? Oh, they're nowhere to be found. That's it. That's Clip gone. Where's the rest of Liquid? Jeems and Mixie, nowhere close to them. So the split hasn't worked out for them this time, although Jeems and Mixie are in good locations. Let's see what they can do to salvage this game. Elsewhere in Los Leones, we have uh, a couple of teams making their way in. X-Flow here as well. Mystic Tarkus, Global Army, and Voldemort. Let's now find... Let, let's try and use this opportunity to give you guys an idea of which teams are playing, because I haven't had a chance to do that yet. It's been non-stop action since the start of this game. So, tonight, in the PUBG EU Pro Scrims, ladies and gentlemen, on the 16th of February, 2022, we have Mercurial and Tropic, Virtus Pro, Team Liquid, Polish Power, Digital Athletics, Na'Vi, Diamond Dogs, uh, Big Boss Life, BBL Esports, FaZe Clan, X Flow, Sakura Zensen, Rise and Win, No Tag, Four Slayers, Bitfix Gaming, and Team Dignitas. Those are going to be your teams in the lobby. And I think Formulation Gaming might have made it in as well. On my list, it doesn't look like they've made it in or they're in reserve, but it's possible they're in here as well. Yes, they are. There we go. Never mind. They are here. So Formulation Gaming have made it into the lobby. I will update my list accordingly. Atomical doing some very interesting driving. Whoa. 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 Ooh. Uh, Atomical, of course, a natural BMW Audi driver in real life on British roads. <laughs> oh, that'll come back to bite me later. He'll watch that for sure. Oh, that was entertaining. Right, now that the dizziness is over, Formulation Gaming, what kind of a rotate have they got? They've actually got a really nice uh, path in. They could even go all the way around the south side of the map and be completely fine until they hit Lost Leona. So they've got an awful lot that they can do. Inside Lost Leona's itself, we've got Bitfix Gaming. Uh, Evil Doffy Mixon, and uh, that is Fainotto, I believe, who is hosting the lobby this evening. So, Bitfix there. Gets a spot onto X-Flow. Doffy could go for a shot with the mini. I don't think it's going to be a one-headshot kill, but he's going to go for it if he can. Remember, it's not like there's any place to pick up helmets up there, so Voldemort does have to be wary that he doesn't lose his head. Welcome to everyone in the chat as well. Oh, made my night. That's great to hear. I hope you're all doing wonderfully. Absolutely fantastic to hear. Uh, we've got three different teams at least sniffing at Lost Leonis, including Digital Athletics. She created might be moving towards Team Liquid, so let's keep an eye on that. Are we going to be scoping the compounds north? It doesn't look like it. He's taking a look at Virtus Pro at the moment. Knows that something's happening over there. That's all he needs to know, really. Team's not going to be rotating there. Taking a look at the concrete. But honestly, I think... She created wants to scope out the compound that Liquid are currently in. So let's see. Oh, well, that's spotted. And it's actually Evas that gets a shot off. Where on earth are... Oh, wow, okay. Digital Athletics needs to run. That's QB from up top. A lovely position there. Obviously, you don't want to get knocked. There. Although, to be fair, Nailup's there with him. These guys are doing all right. Next circle, massive hard shift over to 9 o'clock. 
absolutely huge there. And that means that Virtus Pro are going to be very happy with that. Four Slayers are right next door to them. Huge thank you to Chockster just with the Prime sub a couple of seconds ago. Thank you very much, mate. Hope you're having a wonderful evening. These are the PUBG EU Pro scrims. We're watching some of the best teams in Europe and indeed the world. Duke it out. Basically, for good practice. At the, oh, don't run over your teammate for practice at the moment. And it looks like the four Slayers are moving in on Virtus Pro. They're convinced, I think, that it's not a full squad here. They're calling the bluff. And I think they might be right. It's only Spyro and Batulins. Batulins there in the sneaky position. Oh, no. Oh, no, Blue. Blue. Someone's right there. This is going to be very entertaining when Batulins gets an eye on one of these guys. Oh, that is not who I meant to spectate. Let's go ahead and move back into right here. Batulins is just waiting for the time to strike. Was that a grenade towards Batulins? They have no idea. Here comes Blue. Oh, dear. And that was a mistake. TN goes down as well, and that's half of four Slayers. They had the numbers advantage on Virtus Pro, but had no idea someone was in here. Grenade comes in. Not fast enough to save one of their number. Let's see if Petulans manages to get both. Double doing a little bit of damage with the grenade, but nowhere near enough. The hay bales providing a decent amount of cover to Virtus Pro up here. And suddenly, the turns have tabled, as they say. I mean, Blue's trying to crawl back to the long building. That might actually work if they're not if they don't poke out from the roof and see what's going on here. That could work. Spyro now back into the warehouse, realizing this is a 2v2 situation. Maybe he's going to get an angle on the finish. Let's see. Grenade through the window up top on the left side. Won't make it. Blue's actually made it into the house. I'm impressed. Good recovery job there from four slayers. And here comes Virtus Pro moving in. Perfectix, though, is the first elimination there. Double managed to get a beautiful knock, followed by an excellent Molotov as well, preventing Batulins from going in to try and get the refrag. Double goes down to a nade from Spyro, and that, I believe, makes this a 3v2. Perfectix is safe for now. Do they go for the res? Do they push? I have a feeling they're going to end up pushing here. It's fast, it's furious, and it's Virtus Pro. These guys know exactly who they're up against, and they know how fearsome they can be. Beautiful grenade onto zero, puts him down to 55, and now they are struggling. Double almost bleeding out, but managing to get the res off by the looks of things. Virtus Pro not quite moving in. Lou getting the first head in. That's a clue. Zero was on the opposite side, and there was no one in the middle. Down to 19 HP. He has to heal. If he peeks, there's only one opportunity. Molotov coming in as well. It covers the stairs, but it doesn't actually get him down. Batulans finishes the job through the window, and now it's down to double and blue. Up to 75 HP. What can double do? Somehow managing to avoid. The Molotov! He mollies himself! That's it! There is no way double surviving that! Oh, that is trash. Oh, what? 5 HP? How did he... Instant bandage, by the way. Oh, never mind. The follow-up nade was good enough. Double. Tragic there. Mollying himself. And that actually ended up being the nail in the coffin as Versus Pro completes the wipe with a grenade. They're up to seven kills now with all four players left alive as Phase 3 now pops. That was a 9 o'clock hard shift. We're going west once again. 8 o'clock hard shift to follow that up. Absolutely no rest for the Wicked here. Who's going on here? It's Sakura Zensen. They're fighting against the BFGs. Bitfix Gaming, I, I want to call them the BFGs. That's just more fun. Although, they're not very friendly, I'll tell you that much. Finotto and Mixon already down. Doffy getting hit from the side. Mercurial, where did that happen? Completely eliminate. Oh, that must have been a drive-by. And Tropic versus Mercurial. Dignitas might be looking to come in on this action as well. So much going on in this game. Struggling to keep up with it all at the moment. Team Dictatus trying to move past Entropic right now. They'll have a little bit more success. FaZe Clan underneath too. And Sparking perhaps overstaying his welcome. Unfortunately, that is going to be that. So Entropic happy to play Edge at the moment. How many kills have they got? They've got four kills between them. They've wiped the team. All four of them are left alive. They're doing all right. They are doing all right so far here in game number one. The return of the Diamond Dogs here. Oh, hello. Why is it everyone I spectate immediately starts rolling their vehicle? I feel like I'm cursing these guys today. It's not good. Simsy Physics, Intense, and Zune will be playing as the Diamond Dogs. 
physics will understand from the nature of physics that uh, there's really not much room left to go in this vehicle. He's about to run out of fuel in this truck. He's going to have to move into the compound and I think find something else. Or roll to the next one. There we go. He just ran out. He realizes that now. Big boss life. While taking a look at Virtus Pro, who have got position on the north side of the circle. Phase Clan getting very close to Entropic here as well. Could be very interesting. Big dip for them to play with, but it does mean that if someone chooses to encroach on it, they're in a bowl and they can't easily get out. The downside for Entropic is that they can't just freely move into Phase Clan, because if they do, Polish Power will see them, Virtus Pro will see them from a distance, possibly BBL. If Entropic had no one else nearby and they could just shoot the fish in a barrel here, that would be problematic for FaZe. But because there are so many other teams nearby as well, I think they're okay for now. I think they are good. On board with QB. Polish power being very aggressive up here. They heard Lukaruk in the car and they want to go for it. They get him! Does Marcellic know about the rest of the team? Yeah, he had to be careful there. You must know the friends are nearby and Marcellic actually does a really good job there. Disengaging at the right time, deciding now is not the time to try and fight the rest. Um, and I think he knows that Lukaruk is all but gone in the zone. There is no way he's getting revived there. Now Phase Clan are moving up and Tropic are getting squeezed. That's the problem with Entropic's position. They had to, uh, they couldn't go up to just eliminate FaZe Clan because at the end of the day, FaZe Clan were essentially being protected by Polish power. It's ended up being Polish power fighting both of them. And they've been in the better position because they can choose when to pop up and engage. FaZe Clan have that luxury against Polish power, but not against Entropic. So the other teams are effectively functioning as each other's insurance policy. Look, Marcellic sees Entropic right now and they're saying don't fight Entropic yet. Fight the team on the right first. Make sure you eliminate FaZe before going back up and fighting the team on the edge. They know exactly what they're doing. Marcellic has Entropic in his vision and he's choosing not to engage them right now. Entropic actually moving away, recognizing this is way too dangerous. Crunio and Kapi will be trying to go for... Round two. They wanted to position themselves for a flank, but Entropic maybe came out a bit too quickly. I think they're going to back off there. The rest of FaZe Clan now also going to disengage, but this could be problematic for them. I think they have to push in. Oh no, Norcus is going down to the blue for sure. What can Marcellic do here? Norcus won't be able to get revived, unfortunately. The blue's moving too quickly for him. Marcellic has to just keep running. Gets hit once by FaZe Clan. Virtus Pro, unfortunately, are coming in on the side. Marcellic shouldn't be able to survive this. The zone's moving just a little bit too quickly, which is such a shame. But Virtus Pro pick up the pieces, leaving Crunio and Kapi to try and eliminate FaZe Clan. Fex goes down, leaving Gustav. Gustav tanking three hit points a second now. This is phase four in a competitive circle. Not where you want to be at all. Where can Gustav go? What can he do? How many meds has he got? Six first aids, that's good. You don't want to, you don't want to shoot. I mean, you get the knock, that's fine. But if you can't get the flush. This is going to be med kit simulator here, unfortunately. For Gustav. Spots Batulins gets him. He needs to get the flush to earn the point for his, he does actually, to be fair. He gets Batulins. He might not get the first one. A little bit early on that next first aid kit. I would have waited. He could have afforded to wait about another four, four seconds or so. In the chat, just remember Mutant Hill. Mutant Hill is the best hill in the game, man. These pro players don't realize it. Mutant secretly best gun, Kappa. Oh my god, he might be able to steal Lou. No, he needs to heal. He needs to heal right now. He needs to heal right now. He's still got three first aids. He could have first aided and potentially stolen the point off of Lou, unfortunately. But now it looks like Virtus Pro. Oh man, it's just Spyro. Oh no, and Virtus Pro eliminated with everybody outside in the blue. Absolutely brutal stuff. What's happening all in the middle of the zone? We've got Big Boss Life and Formulation Gaming taking the compounds closest to center. FG. They rotated in. They haven't had kills yet this game, but they've got excellent positioning, which means they could get a whole bunch of kills later on. In fact, 
That is a sick split. You probably don't want to be doing this in phase five. Yeah, okay, that's why they're moving. I was looking at Hawkey and Ticker going, hang on a second. That's a 2-2 two -two in a circle like this. Guys, you got to have to pick somewhere to go when they have, to be fair. They are joining the rest of the team. Get in, he says, get in. Digital Athletics will not wait for you. And they managed to make themselves in there. Who's rotating in on the east side? It's Sakura Zensen. Salty and Tech is still alive. They've got six kills, actually. So they've got a decent points haul so far. And they're one team away from getting into the points. The top eight teams, remember, get placement points. And then it's one point per kill in competitive pub G. So all sorts to be looking out for here as we reach the closing stages. Or I should say maybe the final third of game number one. The Diamond Dogs also have all four alive. They're playing Edge on the Western side. Now, we have had a lot of Western hard shifts, so maybe uh, the zone's going to end up shifting east onto the road, in which case the Diamond Dogs are going to be in a little bit of trouble. Below them are X-Flow, again, with all four players left alive. Sure, they haven't got 10 kills this game yet or anything like that, but the whole point is you need to be in it to win it. And with all four alive at this late stage of the game, it gives them excellent chances indeed, especially if they stick together and work together. Nine teams and 27 players left alive here in the 21 and a half minute mark of this game number one in the PUBG EU Pro Scrims for tonight. Diamond Dogs are spotted by Masinic. Unfortunately, they want to go towards where Digital Athletics are and they know that as soon as they crest this ridge here, they get shot at from them as well. So they basically have to stay where they are and defend from behind them, which is rough. Both teams trading damage, basically trying to destroy the helmets of each other at the moment. Masinic mainly uh, mainly getting hit in his vest. There's probably a spare helmet in those compounds as well. And Diamond Dogs looking to be aggressive. Physics moving up close. Doesn't work. Gets caught by surprise by Voldemort. Manages to finish as well. They have to commit now. Here comes Simsy. Bouncing off the wall. That's a great bounce. Is it enough? No, there's two of them here. And unfortunately, the trade is in play. Simsy goes down as well. And because the broken wall is here, I actually think Tarkas can get uh, rezzed as well by Voldemort. This is leaving intense from the Diamond Dogs. He's busy fighting Masinic at the moment and has to disengage. He's the only player left on his team. That was some good gatekeeping from Exlo, but they have some problems of their own. Now, how on earth are they getting to this? Look, the circle went east. Well, east-ish, northeast, and was also uh, centering on the road, exactly like we said it would. Molotov coming up from Forza. Just a little bit short, but uh, not too bad. Looking for Mikas, looking for Kovaleni, finds Mikas! It's Kovaleni and Scav left. Code Marco gets traded out. Really good grenade. Does damage to all three of them, but not necessarily enough. More flashbangs coming up. That is an excellent flashbang onto all of them. They're going to have to move back. Oh my god. That's a ridiculous number of flashbangs. They should just lie down in a dark room for the next three hours. You get flashed that much. Unbelievable stuff. The flashbangs have bought themselves a little bit of a lull in the fight. BBL deciding to back off. Not wanting to blindly rush in when they realized that they could have used those flashbangs to reposition. So instead, grabbing the compound and being a little bit safer. I, I really like this decision. From a we might be able to win this game point of view, I think that's really good. Polish power, the first of the teams in the placement points, but that is Crunio, unfortunately, out. We're now watching Digital Athletics versus x -Flo. Oh my god, they are all over them. Look at that. Here we go. Global Army here. Trying to push in and Tropic helping with a third party. Who takes one down, but Global Army now suffers the wrath of third party as well. He moves back. Rapture now suddenly in trouble. Schiller and she created maybe a little bit too far back. This is a bold move indeed. If Rapture was able to get that 1v2 off, they might have stood a chance. But unfortunately, it was very high risk, potentially low reward. Although it would have looked spectacular if he pulled it off. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but the other two members of Digital Athletics were just too far back to offer any meaningful support, sadly. And DA are now down to two. Let's see what they can do about this. They've got the shack for cover. They've got the edge of the circle here in phase number six. They're not forced to move any further forward for now. 
Exmo have turned their attention back to them. Where are Entropic? They're out of the game, so they don't have to worry about that third party that was happening to them before. That perhaps is the most critical bit of news. Rise and win across the road. Looking for a little bit of the action as well. I don't realistically think Rise and Win are going to uh, move up on these guys anytime soon. Xflow are though. So here's my question for Xflow: How many flashbangs have you got? Oh, can you see Schiller there? You must. Oh, he caught a glimpse, but not enough to recognize it as a human. I don't think. And there we go. Digital Athletics eliminated. Wow. Nice push through the smoke there from Xflow. I thought it might have cost them a place, you know, but apparently not. That earns them a place in the final four. Xflow, Rise and Win, FG and BBL are your last four teams. And they all have four players alive except for BBL who have three. Next zone has Pop Formulation Gaming having to fight BBL essentially for a spot in the west side of the next circle. Here's Snooski Dooski. That grenade went inside the vehicle, did it? That's actually really good. Unfortunately, though, it's not enough to secure the win here. Oh, and that Molotov is woefully short, sadly. But it's it's so it's impossible to know beyond the crest where they've crawled to, to be fair. And they're now fighting on two fronts. They have to be careful. They don't want Big Boss Life to push in on them. They'd rather get into zone. I think that's what Tico and Atomical are saying to them right now. It's like, leave them alone. We're in zone. Come to us. Focus on defending this position rather than splitting 2-2 two -two and risking fighting two different squads at once. BBL instead are moving north instead. That does buy them a bit of breathing room, but means they have to fight Rise and win for a spot in the circle now. Code Marco might see Scav up ahead. Look at that. His vest is broken. He's got no helmet. This is rough times for Code Marco. Does he see Mikas on the left? Yes, he does. But the no vest, no helmet combo, unfortunately, doesn't serve him strong. Kovaleni gets traded out for it. BBL now forced to move ahead. Scav going in for the kill. They get it. Big boss life eliminated in fourth place. Can we have a carry? Can we have a carry? Yes, carry mechanic. Let's go. Mikas, though, is bleeding out. He has to be dropped very quickly. You have to drop him now. He just died. You had to drop him and start reviving Scav. There was no other way. In fact, you might have just about had enough time there. Oh, what a shame. Bit of a marginal call, or maybe you realized he was going to die anyway, and he just said keep running. That would make sense as well. Xflow now going up against Formulation Gaming. All four still up for Formulation and Xflow. Is it down to one or down to two? It's down to one. Global Army goes down and Formulation Gaming still have all four up. This is what I mean. Just because you have zero kills going into the uh, late stage of the game doesn't mean you're not about to get a lot. Teamwork and sticking together and making sure you nail those squad fights. So, so important for these situations. It's now a 4v2 for the chicken dinner in game number one. There's Rise and Win. Elias Kovaleni and Scav on this side of the road. They're more or less going to have to move. If you take a look at phase eight, I mean, phase nine means that they're going to have to move sooner than these guys on the south side of the road. So really, Formulation Gaming, I think, have this game under control. But when I say they have it under control, what I mean is they may be a 66-33 chance to win here. It is by no means a done deal. If Ryzen win, for example, get a couple of nice double tap headshots and they get two knocked, you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to be pushing. And if they push from here... Woo! That would be quite the game indeed. Everyone trying to go for those quick shots onto the helmets here. Kovaleni not sniping, preferring to go with the barrel and the red dot. Nothing hitting just yet. Swapping out to the mini. Is he going to have any better luck with this? We'll find out. Very low on both the level 2 vest and helmet. He can't afford to take too many shots here. Hey! Who was that? I reckon that was Tico. <laughs> they know. They know. At the end of the day, guys, it is practice. Both teams know what, what, what they're going up against here. They know the situation. They're having a bit of fun with it as well. Obviously, this is serious practice, but, uh, you know, I, I like it when they have fun. Not everything has to be dead serious.
And here's phase nine. Here's where Formulation Gaming are saying, right, they're the ones that have to move now. They have to smoke the road. They have to come across. This is why we didn't push over earlier. We're doing okay. They didn't even use a lot of their um, throwables as well. Molotov now coming out for Tico. A second one too. We've also got some uh, rather delightful frag grenades. There's the smoke train. Flashbangs coming out from Rise and Wind. Scav and Elias actually moving behind the smoke rather than in the smoke, which is very smart. A lot of the throwables from Formulation Gaming are inside the smoke right now. Ticker will be telling his teammates that there are people behind, and that's the angle they're taking. Kovaleni trying to flank. Oh, they're spotted behind, and there's no smoke cover. That's going to be it. It's only Kovaleni left. It's a 1v4. He needs to start with a headshot, possibly under Snooski Dooski. Atomical now flanking far. He wants the hero move in a 1v4. You can kind of afford it. Scav out of the game. Elias not able to provide any more information. Flashbags coming in. Kovalani, no vest, remember? And only a couple of shots left on the level two helmet. Tico will finish it off. And with eight kills, Formulation Gaming, ladies and gentlemen, are going to win game number one of tonight's PUBG EU Pro Scrims. Well done to Formulation Gaming. Absolutely delightful stuff. In second place, we have Rise and Win. And in third place, we have X-Flow.